Happy New Year, and welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. Big food bites off more than it can chew. We got that story plus do-it-yourself electricity. But first, hot off the presses, the Vermont Senate gave final approval to a bill that would allow the recreational use of marijuana, putting the state on course to become the first in America to legalize pot by an act of legislature rather than through a referendum of voters. By a voice vote, the Senate agreed to the proposal that would make it legal for adults to possess and grow small amounts of marijuana, but does not set up a system to tax and regulate the production and sale of the drug. I believe it's a plant. The House approved the bill last week. Governor Phil Scott indicated he'll sign it. It'll take effect July 1st. Holy crap, that's kind of hot off the presses there, James. And I think that in some ways kicks off on what I talked about last. All about the weed, James. Exactly. Yes, this certainly does pick up from your prediction from New World Next Year 2018. If you haven't seen that yet, please go back and watch it. But uh, yes, and I think this is a great demonstration of the old adage that politics is downstream from culture. It's not that politicians are hip and with it and uh, they're the cutting edge of this. No, of course not. They see a parade and then they say, oh, we better get in front of this parade and pretend like we're leading it. And that's how the, these things generally work. When the people want something, the politicians will pretend, oh, we were there all along. We're waving the flag. So this is actually quite a, perhaps an, a, a not, not unmitigated good news story, or as we might say, a good news story, because this is an example of the, the phenomenon. Regardless of whatever you think about legalization of marijuana, the point is that the people are, really do lead the way, and politicians, all they can do is pander and uh, pretend to provide freedom at times when it's politically convenient for them to save their, their job at the next selection. So I, I think this is a positive story, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to see this. And let's just use this as another reminder. I know no one in the audience really needs to be reminded of this, but uh, the use of marijuana or any other substance is not illegal, is not immoral because it is illegal, and it is not moral because it is legal. Nothing has changed. The only thing that has changed is the magic words on the magic parchment spoken by the magic politicians politicians with their holy hexes that they uh, put on the public, right? So I think this, again, is a good example, a good good way of waking people up to the fact that, no, it's not the politicians sitting on their magical hill that have these magic pronouncements that make things right or legal or uh, full of moral rectitude. You know, you kind of remind me here, sidebar of something I talked about on my morning show, as far as, you know, who are the trendsetters? People have probably seen these ridiculous fast food Belluminati commercials. It's this fast food company with the pyramids and taco and the secrets of the dollar menu. So kind of comically behind in a lot of ways. It's like, really, you're just now sort of doing this Illuminati culture. They're obviously way, way, way behind. And I think in a lot of ways, James, stories that we've been pointing out here and we've been hitting up on, you know, the feeds are, like you say, hashtag winning. Yeah, five, also, five years from now, it's going to be Peppy Frogs and uh, QAnon and things like that. <laughs> and they'll still be behind. <laughs> Something we talked about on the New World Next Year finale episode from just a couple of weeks ago was sort of the coming collision of maybe kind of big pharma and what might be termed big cannabis, I suppose. And that's kind of the Jeff Sessions now has kind of renewed this fight and talking about it. I don't know if it's it might it might kind of be a dead issue. The states, I think, in a lot of ways have already gotten that kind of sweet whiff. They're already really high on that tax theft revenue. People in Colorado, senators in Colorado being on the floor talking about Sessions and Trump lied to us and said they weren't going to do this. Oh, yeah. Spoiler. Yeah. Trump trained flip flop lied again about the weed, about immigration. Yeah. Big surprise. Another related story to this, James, as long as we're talking about a little bit of uh, marijuana. Paraguay legalizes marijuana for medicinal use. Both those stories were submitted via Sean Cathcart on the tweets. I just call him Producer Sean as he has been helping me out more and more on the media monarchy kingdom. Our second story this week on New World Next Week, episode 333, our first for 2018. It's an antidote, I think, to today's sort of trending propaganda that you might see on certain sidebars. You may have seen Diet Coke has new flavors. So the antidote to that trend was submitted via David Day, who offers up this little delicious morsel. Kraft Heinz net income fell 24% about a year ago. In December of last year, Kraft Heinz company launched 
their multi-million dollar advertising campaign to kind of fight back against this in response to prolonged negative perceptions about the health risks associated with its products. Between 2014 and 2016, Kraft Heinz net income fell by an astounding 24%, due in no small part to those concerns. Kraft's new Family Greatly campaign, and you got to see some of the ad campaigns for this. Maybe we can include some of it in the visuals. And of course, it comes from, you know, the Mad Men at Madison Avenue. This new ad campaign attempts to dissuade parents from substituting Kraft Classics for more nutritious alternatives. Ostensibly, it enjoins parents to cut themselves some slack by reminding them nobody's perfect. This sort of predatory flavor of advertising campaign is no surprise because it came from Leo Burnett, the people that brought you Marlboro Man and Ronald McDonald. James, I think in a lot of ways I'm thinking of the food companies somewhat like the tech companies and other companies that once seemed so monolithic. Actually, again, on my, on my morning show this morning, I always like to talk about this day in history. On this day in history, it's January 10th as I talk to you. The anniversary of the big AOL Time Warner merger, which, as we know, didn't really work out so well. James, just as you talk about, they don't really lead the way. They realize customers, customers, consumers don't want poison crap for the most part, and they are reacting big time. This is absolutely the point, yes. And you choose what goes in your mouth. You choose to buy these products or not to buy these products. And you ultimately support or don't support the chemical crap monstrosities they try to force feed the public with your own personal uh, filthy fiat. You either vote for them or you don't every single day. That is the vote that you make that actually has a different makes a difference. And we've seen it before with bovine growth hormone. People don't want that in their milk. They stop putting it in the milk. Um, people are against GMOs. They start, they at least slap some labels on non-GMO and things like that. They're moving towards organic and things like that. And of course they play games and they play you know, tricks with their labels and everything. But again, as people, if people continue to put the pressure on, then they will continue having to force to adopt at that. And here's another example, Kraft Heinz plunging because people don't want their crap. And I think, I mean, it's almost brilliant, their marketing campaign, which is admitting it is crap and it is not good. And it's, you know, like you can't strive for perfection, guys. No one's perfect. You got to feed your family a bit of crap now and then. I mean, it really is the most brilliant way you could sell this crap, I guess. But it does go to show that it is crap and that people don't fundamentally know that it is wrong and they don't want it. And that's why it's plummeting and will continue to plummet. And I just want to note that uh, apparently the story we're linking to here is from a site, popularresistance.org, with this red socialist fit fist slash rose motif going on. And the title here, Time to Confront Scourge of Capitalism in Food System. No, 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 no. No, you silly, silly misguided socialists. This is capitalism. You either choose to buy the crap or you choose to not buy the crap. And when you choose to not buy the crap in big enough numbers, those companies go out of business. There's no one with a gun to your head saying you have to eat Kraft Heinz food. No, that's the point. You choose to eat it or you choose not to eat it. And you have a personal responsibility in this. That's what a free society is about. And that's the way the free market should work. Linking and, of course, retreating do not equal endorsements. Anyway, so James, there's been, I think, a, a ton of moves behind the scenes that we've seen sort of politically, a lot of sort of moves and shakes going on. I've been noting just as many kind of moves going on in the big food worlds and also in kind of the big entertainment and media kind of worlds. One of the interesting bits happening in big food is actually some of the powers that shouldn't be like Nestle and Starbucks are actually selling off. They are actually divesting some of these essentially kind of dying brands. Now, as long as you're talking about actual capitalism and, you know, the, the choice of it, I, one of my favorite things now, James, it's one word that I hear sometimes, I, I forget the schedule, but I hear it outside. Tamales! Lady outside, tamales, she makes them herself. I walk outside with a little bit of cash. I give that to her, she gives me the tamales. We smile and we part ways, and it's fantastic. They're delicious and... That's pretty much essentially kind of how it's done. That's actual, real kind of DIY, do-it-yourself. I hope she's licensed by the municipal government and has a, a proper food vending license, and I hope she issues a proper receipt and pays all her taxes. 
Uh-huh. We, yeah, we've got to get ink and paper involved in a simple <laughs> food transaction. <laughs> I believe that might be a Mitch Hedberg joke. Our third and final story on this New World Next Week episode, I think, goes to the CES blackout story that's trending today, where the lights went out at a big tech toy conference that's going on down in Sin City. This final story was submitted via longtime friend to Media Monarchy, Morgan Lesko, who will take us back to May of 2015, when Elon Musk unveiled Tesla's Powerwall, the battery that allows homeowners to store electricity either from the grid or from solar panels. The tech was alluring, but for many, the starting price of 3000 bucks was too steep. The battery could only store up to 10 kilowatt hours of electricity, or around a third of the amount the average American household consumes a day. The newer versions from Tesla can hold up to 14 kilowatt hours. For some alternative energy enthusiasts, and fortunately, people who are into sharing all this information open source online, Musk's deal wasn't good enough. Instead of buying Tesla's Powerwall, they build their own DIY, do-it-yourself versions using recycled batteries for a fraction of the cost. Then they share it all online, swapping the knowledge with hobbyists all across the web. All, almost all the hobbyists that Motherboard talked to, which this story originally comes from, you know, the popular uprising, Motherboard's vice, all the, all the great sources here on Neural Next Week. But ultimately, it's about the ideas. Of all the people that Motherboard talked to, they all built rigs capable of storing way more energy than the Tesla walls. A French guy said his power wall can store 28 kilowatt hours, so much so he actually bought fancy new kitchen equipment just to kind of use up all the extra energy that he stores up in the summer times. James, you and I both believe are stuck for the time being in apartment living, so it's kind of tough to start hammering nails in the walls and start, you know, I don't think my my landlady will let me put up a bunch of solar panels and start building crazy things in the apartments. But I'm excited for a future where the sort of DIY homesteading has is, is all been kind of laid out for us to start to build. Well, actually, I'm uh, in a house now. We bought a house last year. But the point is, this oh. story... <laughs> well, But the point is, this story, again, is such a great example of people taking it into their own hands to not simply go along or, oh, okay, this power wall from Tesla is, oh, wow, it's the cutting edge. It's, it's the be-all and end-all. No, Elon Musk is a scamster. And anyone who doesn't know about that, I wrote an, uh, an editorial about this, well, about a number of things last year, but it was also about Elon Musk and his scamming of the, pu- serial scamming of the public via government handouts. Uh, it's called The Brain Chip Cometh. I'll throw the link in the show notes so that you can read through that editorial where I go through a little bit of the history of Elon Musk and the scamming that he does. And this is another example of it where, you know, let's subsidize Elon Musk and his various ventures to the tune of however many billions and quadrillions of uh, taxpayer filthy fiat um, so that he can provide people with these half-assed, ooh, look at this, cutting-edge technology. It really isn't the best that can be done. And here are people taking it into their own hands to prove it on the one issue that I think, if you've watched How and Why Big Oil Conquered the World, and if you haven't, why not? But if you have, you'll know this is probably the most important issue for the future of humanity, is the question of the energy supply. And can we decentralize the energy grid, just as they're trying to centralize it to the absolute a most centralized system that you can imagine with the smart grid, everything connected, everything networked, all of your information and data being sent back in real time, everything being controlled from a single central hub. We need to go in the exact opposite direction, decentralize as much as possible so that you uh, can actually power yourself. And you have millions and billions of people detaching themselves from the grid. That is the real solution going forward. So this is a very small step in that direction, but it is a step in that direction. And it is not coming from the scamsters like Musk and his ilk. It is coming from people taking it into their own hands to do it for themselves. So this is really, I think, a message for the people in the New World Next Week audience who have skills in whatever field. I don't know. I mean, there's a million different fields out there. In your field, how can you be applying these ideas to decentralize, to get off the grid, to help other people get off the grid? Those are the ideas that are going to make a difference in the future. So my hat's off to the people who are doing this and building their own power walls. Well, and hats off to you, James. Guess what we just did there? We snuck an all-good news episode by everybody there for our first new episode of 2018. If they would like more good news, 
I have my own latest episode of the sort of sp- the go- all good news spinoff from this series, Good News, next week. It's published over on bitshoot.com slash media monarchy, ringing in the new year with some joy to the weed going more into the California and other kind of cannabis stories around the U.S. The Carlisle Group's Dunkin' Donuts drops the bad ingredients and DIY Internet keeps growing and decentralizing. A story about peer-to-peer Internet hosted on our own servers. That's another story by our good buddy Morgan Lesko. So, James, we're using... Mines. We're using Steemit. We're using other sites. I think that's the other way we're trying to maybe up our game in 2018. We don't have to be stuck with all the same. Just like we don't have to be stuck with Arrowhead, Nestle water and garbage Taco Bell food. We don't have to be stuck with garbage Internet. So hopefully people will resonate with this message and support our work. You and I have been independent, non-commercial alternative media for over a decade each. And we can only do it with people's support. James. That's it. Well, beautiful way to start the year. Thank you for three good news stories. And uh, let's keep documenting whatever happens this year. I'll be uh, looking forward to it again next week. James, thanks for your time. All right, man. Take care.